Bidvach, Shavuot Tov, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the congregation of Yisrael. On behalf of uh, the Chazak organization, the Vada of the Queens and Chickens for Shabbos, we thank everyone for coming. Without further ado, it's our honor to call upon the Maridats of the Shul, Rabbi Hersha Walter, for opening remarks and Tehillim, followed by Tehillim, and then we'll be hearing from our guest speaker, Rabbi Moshe Merwes. Rabbi Hersha Walter, please. We've come together to say Tillam. I mentioned this morning that in the cycles of Jewish history, we'd hoped that we'd reach the point that all that sorrows we could see in the rear view mirror, that somehow we'd finally reach some state of Menucha. And yet, Somehow, front and center, we keep facing Taurus. They don't go away. And as the Mishnah says in Saita, we don't have a Migdash, we don't have a Novi. All we have is the possibility, the great possibility, of beseeching the Rabbanu Shalom and Tefillah. And the Rabbanu Shalom should hear our Tefillahs. Tefillah is a middah that to the largest extent is not understood in order. I'm watching carefully and I observe among my Talmidim, I speak to Rabbeim with younger Talmidim and their Talmud have no conception of what Tvila is. I don't begin to understand what Tvila is. It's not the time and place to address that. But Tvila has to be a very intense experience. It comes from the depth of the soul. If Tvila is an external experience, then we haven't davened at all. Davening means that it comes from within. The Mara tells us most remarkably in Sechta Megillah, the Fidal Ramid Beis, the Gemara tells us of these seven Nevi'ahs that existed in Klai Yisrael. And Chulda Hanavi'ah was one of those Nevi'ahs. And <coughs> How do we know that she was in Aviyah? And they turned to her for the Vua. And the question was two questions. Yermio was the greatest Novi of his time, and they should have naturally gone to Yermio and not to Chulda. It's considered a slight for the great Novi of that time, Yermio. So the Gemara answers that Chulda was related to him. So he was willing to have them go to her. But the Gemara asks ultimately, Yoshio HaMelech wanted to be Mishpalo for the salvation of the Beis HaMikdash. 
And instead of beseeching Yirmiyah, that Yirmiyah should implore the Rabbani Shalom to spare them, he sends the Chulna Araviyah, but prompted him. And the Gemara answers, Omar of Shiloi, Ibn Nishan Noshim Rahmani, I say. Women are compassionate. The nature that the Rabbani Shalom gave them, the Rachamim, is accentuated in the, in the personalities of women. It was by nature and nurture. That's the responsibility to raise children. So by nature and nurture, the Rabbani Shalom gave them the personality which allows them to be compassionate. And that compassionate personality would express itself in the compassion for Klai Yisrael and Mufarshim tell us in a greater depth of tefillah than that felt by Yirmiyo Hanovi. Now Yirmiyo Hanovi was not a cold person. Yirmiyo Hanovi states, we all read on Tishimov in the kinos of the gruesome death of Yoshio, how hundreds of arrows were shot into his body. He died a most gruesome, horrific death. And Yermio expresses himself, as I'll tell us, that I envy Yoshio, I wish I had his death. Because mine is worse than his. And why is that? Yoshio died before the Chorban of the Beis Amigdash. And I observed the Chorban of the Beis Amigdash. What I endured was more painful than the anguish of Yoshio HaMelech. Yermio felt deeply the pain of his daughter. And yet, Chulda Hanavia would bring somewhat more compassion to Hatfila, a greater depth of Hatfila, a greater depth of feeling for Klau Yisrael, a little bit more. And that perhaps Yoshio felt was enough to spirit the base of That's the nature of Hatfila. We come together to experience the intensity of tefillah, to understand the needs of the hour, the needs of Klau Yisrael, and the needs of drawing closer to the Rabbeinu Shalom. There's a medrash, and that's why we gather together. But see, an elderly woman came to Rabbi Yisrael Lili, and she said, Rabbi, I lost my time for living. I don't want to live anymore, but the Rabbeinu Shalom keeps giving me years. I don't have what to live for. And he saw, obviously, that there was no means of changing her mind. She said, I'll give you a very simple answer. This woman used to attend the tefillahs three times a day with Rabbi. She said, stay home. Don't go to shul anymore. In three days, she passed away. She was Ms. Paolo. We could understand what type of davana she must have been. At this advanced age, three times a day, she came to the base members to be joined with tefillahs of Rabbi. So when she stayed home, she obviously was Ms. Palel too. Ms. Palelus. But not with the schus of the rabbin. When we come together with schus of rabbin, it's a different nature of tefillah. It's a different schus of tefillah. And the schus of one person. Rabbi Kivayag recites a tshuva, Misrada Shachroina. And the schus of one person that has appropriate kavola, the tefillahs of all of us are accepted. So beyond the fact that we're coming before the Rabbi Shalom Besusarabim, but it's multiplied by the fact that that one of us who experiences the most intense tefillah gathers together with his tefillah all the tefillah sarabim, and that's the manner in which they come before the Rabbi Shalom. It's the reason that we gather tonight. We wish we'd be at a time, we could say the news is better, just on the way here. One of the victims of the Harnof attack a year ago passed away over Shabbos. Lozachino, with a year of Aveda to save his little person, his life. It just adds another step to the tragedy of a year ago and intensifies our feeling of the need to pour out our hearts before the Rabbani Shalom and Tefillah. We'll begin in a moment at Tefillahs, and I do want to welcome the Moshe Meir Weiss, a renowned Rav, an inspiring Darshan, who's come to inspire us on this evening that we've gathered together. We'll begin with the Tilim, and after that the Weiss will address us. 
So we'll start with the tillum now. We'll do ones which are pretty conventional. Start with Pei Gimel, Rabbi Yisai. Shem is my Eliasa. Eliyem al Damila, al Dechrash al Tishka Haitel. Ine ya yivecha yehamoyun, v'sarecha nas uray. Zither <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Lima 
without further ado, it's our honor to have Rabbi Moshe Barry White with us. the media you see over here, uh, the cameras, the tapes, uh, you should realize that when, when you put together a shear today, you're not just benefiting all the people that are here, you're also benefiting people all over Klal Yisrael. I got an email, uh, last week we learned Nazir Dafnun Vav. And it's a complicated daf, and I made a uh, sheet. And I got an email from Costa Rica. Costa Rica! Asking me to send him the sheet because he follows me on Daf Yaimi on Torah Anytime that time. Uh, I gave a share in the Kailu in Philadelphia, and I got a email from. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it. La Yola, California? Is that? La Jolla. La Jolla, right. La Jolla, California. Somebody that follows the Shiurim and wanted the power benching. So, you know, the, the, it, sometimes it, it takes up time from the island to set up cameras, but you should know that when you put together a shear, you're not just benefiting the people that are here, the wonderful people that are here, but people, to be Messiah, people all over the world. Uh, I begin with asking Rishos from Rav Welcher. Um, thank you for the ability to be my Messiah in this uh, beautiful shul. And of course, I thank Chazak, and my good friend Rabbi Yaniv, uh, for uh, inviting me and putting this together. Uh, it's a good thing that I looked at the poster so that I knew what the subject was. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm serious, I would have came and spoken about Avram Avinu, which isn't a bad thing, but uh, we have a very specific topic here tonight. Milsa de Ale de Inche Lavadate. Something that's not on your mind, you don't even think about. To be honest, my children and grandchildren are in liquid, most of them. And the, I uh, don't follow regularly Arutz Sheva, I don't read the papers, and it could happen that I wouldn't be aware of what's going on. But a very close friend of mine is going to Eretz Yisrael tomorrow to visit his children and grandchildren in Eretz Yisrael. And he told me that he's going on Erev Shabbos, this past Erev Shabbos, to Manhattan to get pepper spray. You can't order it online. It's a whole thing. You can't order online pepper spray. But he did research, and he's going to buy every member of his family there pepper spray. And I said to him, Yossi, I remember going to Israel bringing tuna and cereal. <laughs> And now, we're bringing pepper spray. Another good friend of mine, whose daughter just went and got married and has two little children in Eretz Yisrael, was in the park, and they started spring screaming, Mechablim, Mechablim, and she grabbed her children and she ran, and she hasn't been in the park since then. <coughs> Another family told me, that they don't leave the house unless it's necessary. My wife's sister made a wedding last week and she told me that certain people did not come because they felt it wasn't safe to come to the wedding. She made a wedding of a daughter and people did not come to the wedding. It was in a place where right near there there was an attack 
And they were nervous. They called up. They're very sorry, but they're canceling. They're, they're afraid. Ace Tzara Lyakov. These are our brothers and sisters. Now, we don't call them our brothers and sisters metaphorically. They're Achenu Kolbeis Yisrael because we all have the same parent. A Tata and Himmel, that's why Achenu Kolbeis Yisrael is because we all have a common parent of Inu Sheba Shemai. So we gather here on the Matzah Shabbos, one of the last bastions where we could relax a little bit, but we gather here because we're addressing what can we do to ease the pressure, to ease the tension that our brothers and sisters feel in Eretz Yisrael. Now, not everybody likes to engage in such activity. You know, I have enough problems. I got my own problems. You know, I, that's why I don't live in Eretz Yisrael. I, 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 I can't, I can't, I... Our teacher, Moshe Rabbeinu, when did he become great? It says, Vayigdal Moshe, Vayetze Yalecha, Vayar B'Siv Loisa. What does it mean, Vayigdal Moshe? It already says, Vayigdal Hayeled. Vayigdal Moshe is, when did he become a Godel? We call people G'daylin. He become a G'daylin. V'yetzei el echo v'yar b'sivloisim. Says Rashi. Says Rashi. Rabban Shal Yisrael. Says Rashi. No son enov v'libay liyos meitzer aleihem. No son enov. First he looked. He read about it. He heard 600 bricks a day. He heard that they were putting babies in the wall if they were short the bri bricks. No son ain't of the Levi. And then he took it to heart. He li was living in the cushy palace. He could have just said, listen, you know, I'm going into the palace and uh, over here I'm going to, you know, take it easy. It's not my world. No son, ain't of the Levi Leis Meitzer Aleim. He took it to heart. Reb Shimon Shkop says that everybody loves the big three. Me, myself, and I. <laughs> the big three. We have a love affair with ourselves. Avas Atzmi. Everybody loves himself. That's. It, that's an undeniable fact. We love ourselves. It's a good thing. You don't love yourself, you don't take care of yourself. You have to love yourself. Avas Atzma is undeniable. But Rabbi Shimon Shkop says, as we mature, as we steig, we're supposed to stretch the ani. Our eye is supposed to become bigger. First our eye embraces our spouse. That's included in the eye, Yishtaka Gufai. We care about our spouse like ourselves. Then it extends to our children. Then it extends to our friends. That's we have to Tonight we're stretching our eye. And we're going to be concerned about Klal Yisrael. Our brothers and sisters in our Eretz Yisrael whose lives are drastically altered because of what's going on. We're stretching our eye to be concerned about them. You know, some people, they tell me, you know, Rabbi Weiss, I'm learning, and I don't know, I'm not getting the geschmack out of the learning, and it's, it's supposed to be ain't simcha kesimcha satayra. You know, it's supposed to be that, uh, that, that, it's supposed to rejuvenate me. It's supposed to put me on a high. And I'm, I don't know. I'm looking at the watch and saying, when is the shit going to be over? I don't, I don't know, Rabbi Weiss. I don't know. Some things. 
It's because a person has to make themselves roi to receive the Torah. Mem ches kinyane Torah. Now, not everybody is a receptacle for Torah. One of the mem ches kinyane Torah is noisei ba'el im To be able to be a clay kibble for Torah, a person has to have empathy. That's a very important Jewish trait. Somebody wants us a true story. Somebody came over to me that his wife is going for a test. And she's very scared. He says, is it expected of him to take a day off from work to go with her? This was a good guy. And I looked at him like he was from Mars. I said, your wife is going for something that if she is chas v'sham, something bad, how is she going to be able to drive home? Don't you think she needs her husband there for support? And don't you think it's important to show that you care enough? That's empathy. Tonight we're here to sharpen our empathy. Imagine, it's, by the way, I don't mean to scare you, but it's not a far-fetched imagination. Look what happened in a short time to London. Used to be Stamford Hill, Golders Green, Hendon, a nice place to visit. They spoke English, it was pleasant. You got to see the changing of the guard, you know. As you can see, they can't see it anymore, the crown jewels of, in of England. Right, the, the Queen's Gardens. Now, it became a Muslim country. It's frightening. Telling people they should wear baseball caps, not yarmulkes. Do you, you, you don't think that that could happen, especially with the present that, then, that we have now? You don't think that that could happen very quickly here in our country too? And then, the Muslims walking around, we're always looking behind our backs. It could happen very quickly here. So we have to relate. We have to relate to the ace sorry that our brothers and sisters are going through now in Eretz Yisrael. And therefore we're here now to address what could we do to help the situation. The first thing, as the Rav said, is we need to daven. Hakol kol Yaakov ayadayim yaday Esav. Ein koychan shel elu ela befeh. Our power is in the mouth. Our response, Eilu barecha ve'eilu v'susim. They come with their chariots and their horses, their tanks, and their daggers. We come with Hashem. We realize the fulfillment of the Medrash that when Avram called divinely inspired Yishmael, that Yishmael. He will cause the name of Kael to be cried out in Tvila. The first response is Tvila. But you have to know how. You have to take a bracha out of Shemayne Esrei out of the mothballs. There's a bracha in Shemayne Esrei. V'lamal shinim al tihi sikva. It's the 19th blessing added by Shmuel HaKotten. In that bracha, you know, we, got, we have all the, the meaty stuff, you know, Rifa'enu and Baruch Aleinu and Sim Shalom and Shmak Aleinu. You know, Malam Malshinim gets a billion notice. But now, V'chol Arisha Karega Toiveid, V'chol Ayvecha Meheya Yikareizu, V'ha Zaydim. You know what a Zaydim is? You know what somebody willful is? 
Somebody willful is somebody that has this long dagger following a yid as he walks to the castle. He's a Zaydim! And he's, he's in danger! That Arab could pull out that big sword any minute! But Yidin here in Queens say, Vazaydim! Meheira! Sa'aker! Usushaber! Usamager! Let him be broken! Let him be uprooted! I once heard from Rabbi Moshe Sher. He says, What's the meaning of Samager? How do you translate Samager? So he says, I don't know, but anything that's in between Sa'akim and the Sashpilim has to be bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll say, I'm gesunken born. I have an observation about the Brach of Allah Malshina. I have an Ashkenaz. We Ashkenazim are not in a rush. You ever realize the Svadim, they're always saying Meheras. Mehera, Mehera, Mehera. We don't say, we don't say the Meheras. We're not in such a rush. <laughs> Except in the Brach of Allah Malshinim. No, Sarashkanas, there's a lot of Meheras in that Bracha. First of all, it says, Karega, Yoivedu. Vecholai Vecha, Mehera, Yikaresu. Vazedim, Mehera, Saker. Ashkenazim, too. Because the difference between a bomb exploding is Mabish a second. So we ask Hashem, please, Mahira! Mahira! It's an emergency! So that bracha, if all of us here say Vadam al Shinim three times a day, women, once a day, if you die once a day, but you say the Vadam al Shinim, that the Risha, the wickedness, should be lost, and the willful person, Zaydim, a person that straps dynamite around themselves and goes among the guys, that's, that's Zaydim. Mary is a is a Shabbat, is a Maga, is a Khalim, is a Shpilim, is a Khalim, is a That's making a difference. My wife. Gets a, uh, she does a Chinese auction, auction in my shul for Zichman Shlomo Rufua Fund every year. And Zichman Shlomo Rufua Fund, my wife never takes anything for it. But, you know, Razi Ziegler, so Zang Gesund, always tells my wife, you gotta take something, you made such a thing. So she says, this year, she says, you know, amongst your gift certificates, do you have a gift certificate for, for Eichler's? She said, yes. He says, I want to buy my husband something. He has his eye on it. I see him eyeing it every time we pass Eichler's. He won't buy it. I want to buy it for him. Anyway, she bought me this magnificent picture of the Kaisel. They have a magnificent live picture of the Kaisel in the night all lit up. And I put it in my dining room for the express purpose that when I bench and I say, Rachim al Yisrola Mecha al Yerushalayim Irecha. I look at it. When we say benching, which is Daraisa, and we say, Rachim al Yisrola Mecha al Yerushalayim Irecha, we shouldn't say it the same way. More people are being stabbed. Our brothers and sisters are afraid to go out of the house. I heard over. That Reb Shleimah Mebabav, the Baba of a Rebbe, Zech Tzadik Levach, Eschusi Yagen Aleinu. At lunchtime, he didn't eat lunch. But he had two biscuits and a tea. <laughs> Where is the place to sit? No extra seats? Yeah, we'll figure it out. Um, there's, so he was once in London and they couldn't find biscuits with a, his preferred hashgah. So they brought him a tea. So he smiled and he says he doesn't need the tea. So they says, they can't have the biscuits. Chach the tea? So he says, he smiled, he says, 
I, I, I'm not hungry. I eat the biscuits because once a day I want to make, I wash in the morning and the afternoon, once a day I want to make an alan michyet in order to say unavarecha aleha biktusho v'tahara. I can't eat biscuits without drinking something, so I have a tea. You don't have the biscuits, I don't need the tea. Imagine eating in the afternoon to be able to say unavarecha aleha biktusho v'tahara. But I'll tell you that it's a good reason to have pizza. <laughs> to be able to be mispalal al mizbechecha of aleicha necha. Uvenei Roshalayim irakoidesh. These are areas that we have to have kavana nowadays. Not this time. But when they were having, I believe it when they were having the terrible incident in Gush Katif. They asked Rabbi David Feinstein what should be the response. They asked Rabbi David, one of the leaders of Kal Yisrael. Yeah, that's what I think. I think maybe we could push some men here in the front, all the way in Rabbi Welch, all the way in the front. Yeah, sir, you could sit all the way in the front seat over here. You also, yeah? Is there room? Let's start bringing people over here, all the way in the front seat. Um, uh, they asked Reb David, what should our response be? So Reb David says we have a special tefillah that we say on Mondays and Thursdays. Vuracham. We ask Hashem to chamol alamecha. We ask Hashem to remember the Akedis Yitzchak. We ask Hashem, Ona Hashem Oishiyana, Ona Hashem Atzlichana. He says that tefillah needs extra kavana in an ace tzara. The Avodraham, now let me tell you something about that tefillah. The Avodraham writes, Dir Shu Hashem Bihi Matzai, Dear Shu Hashem, Beis Hey Matzai. He's found on Mondays and Thursdays. That's why we say this special tefillah. But do you know the history of this tefillah? This tefillah is a miraculous tefillah. Who's the author of Hurach? You'll say, that's a bunch of things put together. Do you know that Hurach is miraculous? Hurach is miraculous. People don't know. The cowboy writes, that a boat holding Gaila Yerushalayim, people exiled from Yerushalayim, got lost at sea. And they floundered on an island. And the Jews on the boat, cont contained sages on the boat, were brought to the leader. And the leader asked them, from what nation are you? So they said, we're Jews. He said, oh, Jews, I know about the Jews. I know the story of Hananiah, Mishon, and Azariah. I also want to see that happen. I'm going to put you in the fire, and I want to see if you come out. Cowboy writes this. So they said, give us 30 days. They had to choose somebody to go in the fire. One man who the cowboy writes was not the scholar of the group, but he was a very God-fearing man, had a dream. And he, this is what the cowboy writes. He said that they read me a posik in my dream. I can't remember the whole posik, but it has the word key twice and the word loy three times. That's what he said. Who wants to guess what that posik is? <laughs> Has the word key twice and the word loy three times. So there was a Tamachachim in the group and he says, There's a Pasuk like that. It's unbelievable, your dream. It's a Pasuk in Yeshaya, Perik, Mem, Gimel, Pasuk, Beis. There were, used to be people that could tell you that. 
And the Pasik says, Ki savor b'mayim. When you go through the water, itcha ani. You won't be swept away by the sea. They got to the island. Three lows, two keys. So they told him to go in the fire. He went in the fire. And in the fire he was met by three zakanim. Each one taught him one-third of the Hurachim. That's the origin of the Hurachim. Came from the fires. Each third has 18 mentionings of Hashem's name. 18 Asgars. And the next time we look at the Hurachim, on a Monday and Thursday, people say, Oh, good, it is a prince, no, 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 no. Each time you say Vorachim that came out of the mysterious nefesh of a year who went into the fire to recover it miraculously, to acquire it miraculously. Says Rabbi David, this is what we should be thinking about when there's an ace tzara. You know, we, we are tired when it comes to davening. Another davening, another davening. You know what would be really special? Is when you have a few minutes, go to the shelf, take a tillum, and say a tillum for a few minutes. That's not something you have to do. That's something you want to do. You know what? I'm going to give a little time. It doesn't have to be a long time. I'm going to be a li give a little time because my brothers and sisters are in trouble. That's pure. That's pure. That's huge. You know what else is huge? Sitting down with your family for a meal. And you tell your family because you want to teach your family. Tell your family, you know, we, we could plan our day. We go outside without a moment's thought. You're going to go to your friends. You know, the boys and girls in Eretz Yisrael, they can't just go to their friends. Their parents are afraid. So we're all, before we start eating, we're all going to take a tillum and say a capital tillum for those boys and girls. That's huge! That's pure! You come to shul a few minutes early. A few minutes early. It, there's not enough time to look over the daf. Open up a tillum and say a capital tillum. Say a capital tillum. That's not something you have to do. That's something that you chose to do for your brothers and sisters. I just, just very quickly, I will tell you that the Shoshan Soydites says that Dovin Amelech said that the Pasik says that nowadays, since the Churban bias, there's an iron curtain that blocks our tefillahs. Sakoisa ba'anan loch me'avor tefillah. It's hard for our tefillahs to get through. So he made this zmirois of tefillah. And zmirois, zmira means zomar, means to cut. In in Sech the Shabbos. Zmira means to cut. It's a tolda. Right? The zmiras cut through the iron curtain. The zmiras of tefillah. The Seder Ayoyim says, the great Seder Ayoyim says that Dovra Melech was misspelled every time we say, tell him it shouldn't be Chozarekom. So you tell him, will make a difference. It will help somebody, even if it means just easing the mind of somebody in Eretz Israel. It will help. Dame Kamelech says that the Amir of Tillim is Matzel from Gezeris. And I'll just tell you one other thing about Tillim. We're taught that David HaMelech was misspelled that the saying of Tillim should be like the learning of Nagam Ba'alais. Now those people that maybe learned recently Nagam and Alois in the Mishnah Yomis, it's very hard. Very hard. Nagam and Alois, very hard. But why did it say Nagam and Alois? It could have said Hazov and Eizah It's also very hard. Maybe even harder. 
Ramayisha once told me that the hardest mikzayi in Abichel Keshulchanak is Hilkas Ribas. It's very hard. You know what the Balatanya says? Balatanya says that David HaMelech says it should be Kinegon the Alois. Because just like Negom and Alois are not Negea nowadays. We don't have leprosy. Negom is all about leprosy. We don't have biblical leprosy. We don't have Alois. We don't have the Alochas of Tumah. We're all Tame. We don't have Paraduma. We don't have the Mechatas. It's not Negea. So he says, Tilim is also not Negea us. Oh, I love your time. The whole day I talk about it. Yeah, sure. The whole day I talk about it. People talk more about the Mets. Ah, oh, but I did. David Amel says, don't worry that it's not Negea, you. It should be like Negea, and all least it's also not Negea. That's what the Balatanya says. But what else? It's for you. Okay, we know. We know that we have to dabble, we have to have it on our mind. In Sim Shalom, I have to tell you. I told my Olam after the t- tragedy of Leib Kletzky, all of Shalom. You have to say you can perk differently. You know, people, it's amazing to me. You know, I'm learning, and I have my sitter on my shtender. So when I close my Chumash after the Aftarah, and I'm reaching over to get my sitter from the shtender, by the time I get the sitter down, they're almost saying the, 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 the Mishaberich. <laughs> Why are people running through the Kampukin? You know what you're saying, you Kampukin? We are spoken. Ransom us. We are stays one and save us. Rescue us. The arts go translate it. Min kol ako, min kol marim bigen. You have to say that. Oka, Misa, Marabisha, that's a Livy Klatsky. That's a stabbing. That's a hard knife massacre. I want to ask you when you said on Friday night, <laughs> did you get a tremor when you said it? If you didn't, then it's not on your mind. It has to be on our minds. But what else? What else? You came to hear some ideas. What else? So we turn to Unzir Etate, the Chavetz Chaim. Zechat Tzadik. Chaydish Vrach, Eschus Yagen Aleinu. The Rash Kebahag of his door. In the fifth parak of Abbas Chesed, in the fifth parak of Abbas Chesed, in a footnote, he writes as follows. This is a time we're in Poland. They asked Shkita for two and a half million Poles. This is a time we used to think Poland. Poland was Poland. We, we thought that we would stay there till the Mashiach, because the Pol, the Goyesh of Polak, was not a threat for assimilation. He was a drunk. He was coarse. There was no threat of assimilation with the Pol. So we thought it was safe for us there. And then things started to turn really bad. Really bad. So the Chavetz Chaim writes in a footnote in the fifth parak of Avas Chesed, Nowadays, that the Midas Adin is, is becoming stronger and stronger. This is the way we feel in Eretz as well now. So, what are you going to do? How do you stop like a billion Arabs? They're, they're in our cities, they're, they're driving our buses, they're carrying knives, they're right around us. We say, What does he write? We have to strengthen the Mida of Chesed. Why? Listen to the Heilige Chavetz Chaim. 
Because Amar Chazal, Amar HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Ma Elu, Shehein Ba'atzman Tzvichen Chesed, They need Chesed, they need help. Oisin Chesed Elu Em Elu, they help one another. Ani Shani Molei Chesed Verachamim, Alachas Kama Vekama Shani Tzorech, Lignol Chesed in Briyosai. You hear the words of the Chavetz Chaim? He goes on to say, he brings a psikta. The psikta says, from Oz Yoshir, the psikta says, was in the schus of chesed. So it was the schus of the chesed and the taira that we were saving in time. You know what the chesed was in the time? Four-fifths of the generation died in the Mac of Cheshach. But not their children. The children didn't deserve to die. The, t- the parents died. Children didn't. Four-fifths of Kal Yisrael were Yisoyimim. And we took care of millions of Yisoyimim. Says the Chavetz Chaim, that's a charity law chesed we always remember the end of the Pasik. Lech te chacharai ba midba, but the beginning of the Pasik. Zachalti lo chesed noroyach. That's chesed. Avas klu lo isayach. That's toy. Today, there's a lot of chesed. And you'll say to Rabbi Weiss, there's a lot of chesed. Yet there are bali chesed. You have Rabbi Newman over here with chickens for Shabbos. Please, please, get involved. But there's an opportunity for chesed. You know how many elderly singles there are? You know what, it's a matter of fact that some parents, they don't know how to make connections. They just don't have it. Some parents, they're busy on the phone, they make connections, some parents, they. And their children sit at home and they're not getting Shidduchim. 30 years old, 40 years old. It's a Shrek. Do Chesed. You have a neighbor, you see that nothing is cooking. Help out. We have a tuition crisis that's throttling people. Some people, they don't know how to negotiate for themselves. They end up putting it on credit cards and then they lose their houses to 500,000, half million dollar credit card debts. You know some people have problems, help them. Maybe go down to the tuition board and help negotiate something for them. But do something! Chesed, we need to be mischazek, but we don't say chesed, the Chavetz Chaim, I'm not saying this, he said, that's what he says. Hey, Sora, I have to be mischazek, but we don't say chesed. I'll give you one story that the Chavetz Chaim Heritage Foundation writes in their, they have a Sefer on Avas Chesed. And in their Sefer they say a story, true story, about a small Hungarian town, not Budapest, not a big town, not Buda, not Pest, small Hungarian town. And they didn't have a yeshiva, they hired a Rebbe. The Rebbe came, they didn't have money to pay him, so they took care of him. They bought him food, they got him wood for heat, and many years the Rebbe taught, until he got old, he couldn't teach anymore. He got old, then his wife passed away. They got a new Rebbe. So now they shifted the attention, they took care of the new Rebbe. They forgot it, some gazon. they forgot about the old Rebbe. He's, he's over the hill. Now there were no pensions in those days, except for one grandmother, who said, all these years he took care of my children, and now he should be. So she cooked for him. And she went upstairs and brought him his meals until he passed away. It was 39, 38, no, it was already 37. She passes away. And of course we know the nightmare of Hungary over 400,000 Hungarian Jews were taken 
to Auschwitz. Except this woman's grandchildren. A guy took them in and she had a false wall. And she put them in behind the false wall. And she went and she bought food for them in small increments that nobody should expect. Twice her house was raided and they weren't found. These grandchildren survived the war. The house was the house that years before that Rebbe lived in. That's chesed. That's chesed. <clears throat> True story. So chesed. This was Pasha. Vata'aneho Sorai. Sorai afflicted Hagar. Now she didn't use a whip. God forbid. Chas v'shom. Vata'aneho Sorai. Says that she made her carry her bath apparel to the bathhouse. That was, but she wasn't treating her like anyone. Vata'aneho Sorai. And Hagar fled. Ramban. <clears throat> Listen to the words Ramban. This week's parish. We wouldn't be able to say this. Ramban. Of all the pirushim on Chumash, Ramban is in the Chumash. Chata imenu beinu yaze. Our mother, our mama, sinned. When she afflicted Hagar. Not only our mama. Vigam Avram. And also Avram Bohanicho Lassois came. That he let her do this. Vishoma Hashem El Onya. Hashem heard Hagar suffering. Vinosan La Ben Shiahe Pera Odom. A wild man. Lano Izera Avram Vesora. To afflict the descendants of Avram and Sarah Bechol Mine Oinoi with all kinds of afflictions. This week's parasha Ramban, short and sweet and to the point. With stabbings, with massacres. Why are we being told this? Because Jews suffer. when people are not nice to one another, especially to a spouse. <clears throat> you have to be nice to each other. I know, life is tense. We get on each other's nerves. But look what happened because of an Inui. And we're not talking about anything nasty. People are nasty to one another. They're not nice to one another. They say hurtful words to one another. We're suffering throughout the ages because of this Enoi. We have to be nicer to one another. We have to make an effort and say, would I like to be talked to this way? Would I like to have my voice, somebody raise my voice at me? I have to work on this. It's very important. It'll help in Eretz Yisrael. But then there's another problem. There's something that's stopping our tefillahs from being effective. We are davening. A lot of smart people didn't mean me to come here today and tell you that we have to say a sim shalom and a shalom rav with a lot more kavana. But it's not helping. There's a problem. The says that on Rosh Hashanah, Hashem says, Imru lefanai malchiyos zichroinos v'shayfres. Malchiyos! Kedei shetam lichuni aleichem. You point me as your king. Zichroinos? Kedei sheyalu zichroineichem lefanai l'toicha. I should remember you. Ubameh! How am I going to remember you, B'shaifer? Ask the Samsoifer, excuse me. B'shaifer? 
What about the fact that we're in shul from 7 o'clock in the morning till 3 o'clock in the afternoon? Was that chop liver? Oh, my man, my shaver? Says the Chavetz Chaim. If somebody uses their mouth to speak about other people bad, did you hear what was going on in shul today? Can you believe what's going on in the community? Did you hear in the school? You wouldn't believe the counselors in the bungalow colony. Want to hear the latest scoop? Says the some cipher. A mouth like that can't be effective in davening. You need the pure appeal of the shifer that's unadulterated. So you have to know that if we want our tefillahs to be effective, we have to kasher our mouths. My good friend Robbie shared with me a Yushalmi and Peyad of Chesamid Beis. Actually, I was aware of an earlier Yushalmi on Davches, but this, this Yushalmi puts it, Mamish says it to the point. Yushalmi says, Amar Rebbe Abba Bar Kahana, Doiroi Shel David, the generation of David, Kulon Tzadikim, but Val Yidei Shehoyu Deli Torin, Deli Torin are people that speak Lash and Hara. They went to war and they died. We know there were a hundred casualties a day. Now Achav was a really wicked man. One of the people that didn't have oil in my bar. But they didn't speak bad about one another. They went to war and they were victorious. You have to know what the Kel Kel Yaakov is blocked when the mouth is trafe. And I want you to know that the Nisayan of Lash and Hara is the Nisayan of Besser Dimension. It's the Nisayan of Besser Dimension. What's Pshat? Well, we, we don't have a Yetzahara for to do to do Grabba Zachen. They're talking about uh, uh, this, this is a Kehillah this is a gathering of righteous people. Ah, but, but we see people doing less and we talk about it. Oh, you see him, he's always talking in Shul. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's don't sit there. Yeah. It's in the Sion of Bethany I mentioned. But it, it makes the mouth ineffective. I had an experience which made me speak about it. I had an experience, I was by a chasana, and I sat down next to an Odom Choshiv Ma'oid, and I was looking forward to talking to him. His Rebetzin passes by and says to me, don't sit next to my husband, you'll give him a headache. <laughs> Now, everything in me screamed, when I get home, I have to tell my wife, she won't believe what happened. <laughs> I was so hurt. I picked myself up and I walked away because, you know, it's hush of a rabbit. And I, and, I, and I said, you know, if I go home and tell this to my wife, it's pure lush and heart. What Toyalis is there for me to tell her? What to Ellis is there? It's true, I know it's true. She was wrong, I know she's wrong. Does that give me an excuse to share with my wife? Now, if I would share it with my wife, my wife would never look at this Rebbitson again the same way. Now, actually a few months later, the, my wife and this Rebbitson had to cheer together a session somewhere. 
If I would have told my wife, she would have never accepted that she had a sexual with her. That would have been pure lush and horror. So I remember I said this over in a seminary class, and I didn't tell them the story. I said, if something, somebody is really not nice to you, a girl comes in in the morning and says, you know, I have to tell you how you look. You should get on the worst dressed list in the Jewish press. So I said, when your friend comes in, you can't wait to say, you know, could you believe what she told me? So I said, could you do that? And the one girl raised her hand and said, Rabbi Weiss, that's not Lushen Hara, that's venting. <laughs> that's what she told me. I said, that's not Lushen Hara, that's venting. But that is Lushen Hara. Nobody said Lushen Hara is easy. And you know, when it says me, you don't get a yomim l'ra's for nothing. It's not easy. Moshinar is not easy. First of all, you have to grow up knowing to be on guard. Remember, it's the only thing that we ask Hashem for assistance in davening. Kashrus is very hard, but we don't ask Hashem for assistance in kashrus. We don't ask Hashem for assistance in Taras uh, Mishpacha. And we kind of say, it's hard. It's hard. You know, I grew up, when I grew up, they taught us a ditty. Lashin hara lamid hey, go to Gehenim the easy way. That's the way we, we were brought up that way. And there's nothing wrong with teaching your children that. Well, oh, no, we're scared of them. Scare them! Scare them! Scare them! Take them to the matzo bakery close to the oven and say, Wash it or you go right in there! Scare them! You're doing them a favor! Well, I might add. I might add that it's not only Lush and Hara. It's a Nas Tavorim. Don't hurt people. Your child is embarrassing their friends in the public school, in the schoolyard. Where did you get 10 left thumbs? Why do we play with you? You have to tell him you're flirting with your And then you have to, you have to guard your speech. Rav Palm would often say, the Gemara in Brachas, that Bachure Yisrael Amesim because of the sin of Nivel Peh. Now we're with Goyim, and by the Goyim, every third word is Nivel Peh. Every third word. They don't have a word to say, so they use Nivel Peh. It be, by them already, it's, and you're with them all the time, it could creep into your speech. You cannot allow it. That pollutes the mouth, and then it can't be effective with a good shmakalainu, with a good simshalim, with a good vuhurachim, with a good vulamalshinim. Finally, there's nothing that protects us more than Tyra. Hakel kel Yaakov vayedayim yedayesav. So the first hakol is chaser vav. So the Gra explains hakel kel Yaakov. When the kel of Yaakov is diminished, what's Yaakov? Yaakov ishtom yoyshei vayholim. Vayholim are not that he has a house in Athens and a house in Cape Cod and a house in Florida and a house in Harad and a house in Lake Sheldrick. It means that Ayale Shem Veeva. Yaakov Ishtom Matoivu Alecha Yaakov Ein Toiv Ela Toira. Shenema Kilekach Toiv Nosati Lochem Toirasi Al Tazaivu. If Hokel Kel Yaakov, if the learning is deficient, then you die in your day, Asaf. 
That's when our enemies are stronger. We have to be most of Torah. Tomorrow, the Mishnah Yomis starts learning Mikvois. It's a wonderful thing to do. Two Mishnayas a day. Uh, if you want, you could listen to me. I have a free service. 718-906-6471. It's me. I learned two Mishnayas a day. I'll be learning the last, tonight yet, I'll be learning the last Mishnah in Taurus and the first Mishnah in Mikvois. You can listen by your lunch break. Less than, less than 15 minutes, you get two Mishnayas. It's archived, by the way, all the way from Brachas. So you could learn Zeroim, it's there, Zram, Noshim, Moed, Nazikim, and most of Tyrus is there. We'll be finishing later on this year. We have a few Masechtas left. But two missions a day. Do something extra. The Dafyaimi. This Wednesday is learning Masechta Saita. What a way. I have news for you. If you start now, you'll finish in seven and a half years. The Masechta Saita is such a Geschmack Masechta. There isn't a hard blot in the Masechta. I mean, learning it, you know, on a, on a basic level like I do. But it, it, if you're not Mavis Sedra yet, a year has to be Mavis Sedra. Hi, Abodom! And what's the reward for Mavis Sedra? You know the reward is Marika Moyomo Vishnaizov. The beauty of Mavis Sedri is, is it's not like Daf Yomi, it's not like Mishni Yomis, it's not like Dirshu. It's not something that you, ha you, ha you, ha you ha either you have the whole thing or you don't have it. A yid has to be mashing the Pasha every week. You didn't do it last week, you have to do it this week. It's not, it's, it's, it's not well, I, you know what, I didn't start from Bereshis, I'll start next time. You have to do it, Vayera, we have to be Mavis Sedri, Vayera. And, and even if you don't have a whole package, the, the, the fact that you do Shnai Mikra Bechatagam is Marich Eloyama Vishnaisa. What does that mean, Marich Eloyama Vishnaisa? What does that mean? So Shnaisa, we know, means longevity. What's Yom of? So I'll tell you two things. Number one, it means that we'll have enough time in today to do what we want to do. People are always saying, you know, I just don't have time to do what I want to do. I wanted to read the Sefer. <laughs> I've been wanting to read the biography of Avadi Yosef for the longest time. Of Avadi Yosef, I don't have time. I want to spend time with my grandchildren. I don't have time. Arichin lo of means Hashem will give you the time to have what? Arichas yamim. Have time to do what you want to do. I'll tell you another thing what Arichas yamim is. It's a sad thing, but I've heard this from people. I've heard from people that have told me that I've heard from people they've told me that they they get up in the morning and they can't wait till the day is over. They already want to go to sleep. They don't like their life. They're already hoping for the night when they could get into bed, when they could crawl into bed. Arich Yomim is the bracha that Hashem, we have such a cheshek and gishmak in life that we want a long day. Not many people that are that way. We love life so much, that the life that we live, that we, we wish the Lord day could be longer. That's a big bracha. That comes from being Mavis said. And that's the bracha of Akil Kel Yaakov. So I want to recap, again thank Rabbi Welcher, Chazak, all of you. I also want to mention that I'm looking to come more often to Queens. Try to, we want to try that, I should be able to come once a month. So if anybody wants to help that effort, uh, Yaniv is looking for sponsors. So please speak to Yaniv, he's the one that's standing, if you would like to be involved. Uh, we used to have a very big Eilam on a monthly basis, I'd like to restart that. Um, also we have outside, if anybody wants, I have a set of uh, CDs on the entire Pirkei Avos, 12 CDs for $36. 
is a new set of CDs which is, actually says on the cover Yom Naram, but it contains all kinds of stuff of how to do tshuva, 63 things to do tshuva on and all kinds of things. That's six CDs for $30. My swarm power benching is outside and my other swarm. If anybody wants to subscribe to weekly CDs, they can come to me afterwards as well. I just want to recap. To be great, we have to be nasan eina v'libay. We have to be naisei ba'olam chaveirai. To do so, we should first add in our prayers, have in mind in the v'lam al-shinim, break it out of the mothballs. In Freis Aleinu Sukkah Shleimecha, in Yukum Purkan, and Rav David says, the Hurachim, to have Kavani in that miraculous tefillah that came from the fires, to once in a while take out a Tehillim, special just for this, to remember the words of the Chavetz Chaim in Avas Chesed in the fifth barrack in the footnote, that Hashem wants us in an ace Sarah, when Sarah says, Miskachis Miyayim Miyayim, to be Mishazek B'midas HaChesed. Remember the story of that Hungarian family. Remember that because of Atanea Sarai, therefore the Ramban says that he was given Rishos, his descendants, Yodai Bakol, Pera Adam, to afflict Zereshel Yaakov. So therefore we should be careful to be nice to each other. Do you remember the Heilige Yishalmi, Peyed Afches, and the Chsam Seifer, that if we want our mouths to be effective, they have to be clean, free from Lashonara, even from venting. And finally, to remember, if Hokel Kel Yaakov, Yodayim Yidei Esav, to be Mesazik in learning, in extra learning, to be Mashpi, our children to do so as well, and that's Chus, may the Rabbi Nishalom give Shalom Ali Yisra.